another card tutorial for this cute slider 3D rocket ship card. To start, we're going to need a card base. I chose a 4x6 card in white. Next, we're going to need a piece of cardstock cut slightly smaller than our card base. I chose a navy blue color. And our last background layer is going to be our sentiment layer that will be layered on top of our darker navy blue. Next, what I'm going to start doing is just laying out all of the pieces that I cut earlier with my Cricut. And you'll see I am starting to just build out the area that will be the rocket ship. Adding in the stripes and some of the details, the window, the portals, that kind of stuff. We will also need a small button. I used a little wooden one, some double-sided tape, glue stick, foam squares. I have two different sizes. I wasn't sure which I'd need. And I'm going to bring back in those rocket ship pieces and just start assembling our rocket ship. So we've got the main body of the rocket ship here. I'm going to flip it over on the back and stick a little bit of glue on the edges just so I can stick these I don't know, rocket ship legs on. So I can stick those on the back so they kind of look like they're behind the rocket ship. Give it a little bit more dimension. Flip it back over. And before I add any of the other legs on, I'm just going to add the design elements here. So the green stripe is going to go sort of right up the middle and it's actually going to stop at the top because then we're going to have a red cap on the rocket ship. We also have two stripes to add on. I chose to use one in a darker teal color and a yellow color. And we also have the porthole. We've got a black circle and a blue circle here just to represent the window. I wasn't sure yet where I wanted to put the yellow so I decided to add the window and see where I wanted that first. And now that I've got the window added on, I'm going to add in that tip of the rocket ship here. I chose to use a red color, just some nice bright colors, and then I'm not doubling up on all the colors. And I thought it tied in nicely with the flames at the bottom. Next, I'm going to add on this last yellow stripe here. And when I pulled it off the board, I warped it a little bit, so I just had to adjust it there. And then I'm going to add my last leg on since I wanted it on top of all the stripes. So just make sure it lines up with the bottom of the other legs there. Just a little bit there, add a little bit of perspective. And we're going to flip the rocket ship back over, add a little bit of glue to the bottom. I'm going to add some glue to that orange flame, stick the red flame on top of it. Then flip that over and sort of glue it on so there's just a little bit of overlap, but we want it to hang over so we can see the flames coming out of the back of the rocket ship. And there we go. We've got our rocket ship done and we can set that aside and start assembling our final card. As I mentioned earlier, this card is going to be a slider card, so the rocket ship will be able to move back and forth across the card along the track that is cut into this white piece here. So you can see it will go back and forth. So in order to make it a slider card, we need to find a button. I've seen people use pennies, but here in Canada we've discontinued the pennies, so we don't have any more. So you want to find a button that is small enough that you can't see it through the cutouts of the stars, but that's big enough that it doesn't fall through that slider. You're also going to need foam squares. These are the same foam squares I always use. I just get them at the Dollar Tree. You get about 50 of them on a sheet for $1.25. So I'm going to take one of these. I have some that are already cut in half. I'm actually going to cut it into a quarter because this button is so small and I want it to be able, you'll need a foam square that fits in between that track and doesn't catch. Otherwise it, it won't be quite as smooth sliding across. So I'm going to stick this on onto the button. If you wanted it to be a little bit more sturdy, you could use a dab of glue and just let it dry before you, you start doing the next step. I didn't need to have any glue. I don't normally find that they fall off. I normally use glue on the other end, however, to attach the rocket ship on. But for now, because I want to get everything assembled, I'm going to stick this rocket ship on. I can take it off later once we've got the rest of the card assembled. If I feel that it needs to be stuck down a little bit better, I can attach some glue. So here I was just making sure that the card would be able to, or the rocket ship would be able to slide properly and nothing was catching. And there we go. So then this is going to be mounted onto the navy blue piece. And you know, again, I'm just double checking that it's all stuck down and, and not wobbling around because it is a thicker piece of foam. It kind of wiggles back and forth. But I'm going to grab those foam squares again and I'm just going to use some of the smaller pieces here. This will be a little bit more difficult to stick down. So if you do have thinner foam tape, that might be a little bit easier to stick these down. However, I didn't have any, so I just had to stick with these foam squares. So I used some of the full squares up at the top near where the sentiment is, and there were fewer cutouts. Around the stars and in the little areas, I did have to use quarters of it and have pieces. But I just wanted to have 
sort of enough of them spread around that the card was nice and sturdy and there weren't any pieces of this layered piece that were sagging down. So I'm just cutting up some pieces here and trying to stick them in between those uh, stars. And again, you will want them kind of along where that track is, but you don't want them so close to the track that the button's going to catch on them. So you don't want to line it up right up against there. And another thing I will mention is you don't want to have them right up against the very edges of the star cut -ins. just because you'll see them a little bit more obvious. You'll be able to, when you turn the card to the side, see that there is foam holding it up. But, I mean, it's sort of unavoidable when you do a 3D card like this. But it's not too noticeable, and you're only noticing it if you're flipping it onto its side and such. But we don't want it to poke through all of those cutouts as well. I'm just try and disguise it as much as we can. So I wanted to make sure that I got it all the way to the corners because the corners tend to peel up. You also want to make sure it's on either side of the track. That way the button doesn't kind of fly out the other end. So I'm just sticking the last few on here and then I'll be peeling off the backs of these and I'm going to be sticking it onto that navy blue backing. And just a few more here along the track. Kind of thought I was done and then I added in a few more and I just I would rather add in a few more than I need than stick it down and not have enough and then kind of try and struggle to uh, to get everything stuck down. So I'm just peeling off the backs there. Sometimes they catch a little bit and I was having a little bit of trouble getting them off but so now we're going to try and center it as best we can. It's a little bit difficult with the foam squares but um, as close as we can get is probably the easiest here. And then there we go. So just kind of line it up, eyeball it. Again, you could measure it if you want, but I'm not that finicky about it. So I just normally stick it down and then gently press over where you've got all those foam squares, press over your button and your slider piece. Make sure your slider still slides just now before everything is kind of set and really stuck on. If for some reason your slider caught on any of the foam pieces, this would be the time to try and fix it. So there we go, we've got it all stuck together and we are just about done our card. Our rocket ship moves nicely back and forth. I believe my foam is small enough that it actually will spin around so we can go in back and forth in both directions. So I'm gonna speed it up a little bit here because this is kind of boring, but I'm gonna pop some double-sided tape onto the back of the cardstock. I actually ran out of the thicker stuff, I'm running out of everything today, but I grabbed some of the other double-sided tape and stuck that on. And just put it on alternating, well, on every corner and alternating sides. And then this is going to center onto the card base. Now, I also kind of decided now that I needed a little bit more color. The white on the blue on the white was a little bit not, not as exciting as I wanted. So I have all these cutout pieces that were from the Cricut when I cut out the background. So they were, they were white because they were the cutout stars. But I decided just to give a few of them a coloring of yellow. I've just got a regular old yellow marker here. And I'm going to color these ones in so that I can actually kind of stick them to that background piece. Had I known that I was going to do this beforehand, um, I would have colored these and stuck them to the blue before I had added the foam pieces. That would have made it a little bit easier. As you'll see, I had to glue on the one side and then kind of use some super tiny tweezers to try and stick them in the holes, kind of like I'm playing a game of operation. So had I not had the foam squares and I had planned this out a little bit better before, I could have very easily just stuck them down normally, but um, I had to go and use those tweezers because I'm planning this out as I'm filming it for you guys. I'm just going to go ahead and keep sticking these stars inside some of these gaps here just to add a little pop of color, a little bit more dimension, and I'm getting the stars that are just slightly smaller than the cutouts that I'm putting them in so I'm not using the same stars from the cutout they came with just to add a little bit of a border of blue around them I think it'll kind of look nice make them look like they're a little bit further away kind of within the cutout so I'm just coloring up a few more here and I'm going to speed this up just a little bit to get it going and I will check back in in a minute <music> Stars inset in the gaps that we had there 
and I think it looks pretty good. Our card is pretty much done. I'm going to give the rocket ship a little test here, make sure it does actually still move back and forth, because I, I did go in afterwards and add a little bit of white glue just to keep it stuck down because I found it was wobbling around a little bit. So there we go. Pop the top back on my glue and get my stuff all set up here. Make sure that's stuck down. Give it a go. Yep, still moves. And I've got one extra star here that I had colored. So I think I'm actually going to just pop that on the inside and glue it in there. And it kind of ties in the front with the inside and make it a little bit more interesting in there for when I do write my message to whoever this card goes to. There we go. So sticking that star down. And we are all good to go. Card is all done and ready to be sent out. It's not too 3D that it won't fit in an envelope, which is nice. And it's a little bit more fun than just a regular card. We got a rocket ship that spins around and goes back and forth. Just a little bit more interactive and fun. And that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to be kept up to date every single time I post, hit that subscribe button down below. If you'd like to see a written tutorial of this card, just click the blog link in the description below. Thank you guys so, so much and have a great day.